Hi there, and welcome to a really fun episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and I am here with my wonderful, great, amazing, beautiful friend, Christy Olaf, who is the co-founder of the Rock Church of Saurita, where um, my family attended when we lived in Arizona. And she's here today to talk with us about a really important prayer topic that I don't think we've covered at all on the podcast in depth, which is how to hear God when he's calling you into something that might not sound logical at the time. And, and she's here to talk about their calling to create um, a, a ministry and to establish a church in Arizona. So Christy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. I'm so happy to be with you today. Well, I'm really excited that you're here. And I was just telling Christy that like the microphone actually that I'm using for podcasting and the audio processor is one that my husband who did sound for The Rock and did some videos for them had used for that. So it's all coming full circle. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, we like to start with a just for fun question. So I wanted to ask you if you could tell us where your favorite prayer closet is. It could be very untraditional or it could be like a literal war room prayer closet. Yes, I would love to be able to say that I have this amazing setup in my house somewhere, but I don't. <laughs> it's actually where I spend the most time praying. There's two places that I can think of off the top of my head is right on the side of my bed is where I have like my journal and my, my Bible and all the stuff that I normally use. And um, that's where I spend most of my time in prayer. Um, but because I'm a mom of six, I spend a lot of time praying in the shower. And that's because it's the very place that I'm by myself um, and not interrupted mostly. And so um, those are the two places, but mostly by my bed. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about, so you're a mom of six and so you guys have four biological boys and actually you're a mom of seven because you have a daughter-in-law now. That's right. <laughs> so you have four biological boys, you have yes. two adopted kids. I'd love to probably have you back on the podcast to talk about foster care and adoption yes. and that. I whole love thing. that. But tell us about your family. So we do have four biological boys. They are from the ages right now, 22 to 16. And um, my oldest is Chandler and he's married to Allie, our daughter-in-law. And they are just moved, let's see, to about two weeks ago, three weeks ago to Redding, California. And um, I miss them, but I'm super excited about what God has for them there. And uh, they're just working and attending church and building great relationships and wanting to serve the Lord there. So we're super excited for them. And my next son, he's 21, his name's Colin, and he also lives in Reading and he's in school at Bethel and it's his third year. And so we're super excited about that. Coming up will be his third year in August. And then I have an 18 year old that just graduated high school, that's Cade. And he's looking at going into real estate like his mama, I'm a realtor. And then my next son is Chad, and he's 16. He'll be a junior at his high school, and he enjoys dancing on his high school team. And they've done very well for themselves. He's on the PAC dance team, and they have had a great year. It's going to be fun to see what God has for them this year. And then we have two kids that we adopted through foster care. My daughter is Liliana, and she's eight. She is going to be a third grader, and then my son Levi is going to be six in just a few days, and he's going to be a first grader. So enjoying a new set of elementary kids again and feeling sometimes like we've started over, but um, God is showing us so much through, through adoption and, and when we did foster care through foster care too. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of parallels in your journey with all of the decision making and the process of starting the church and then in your whole process of fostering and adoption. I mean, it just seems like there are probably a lot of parallels with those huge life changing decisions. So um, yeah. I think this, this conversation will be really applicable. Yeah. We'll go all the way to the beginning and tell us about how you and Tim met and kind of, kind of how you guys started. Yes, so my husband and I met when I was in high school, 
and actually at the time he was best friends with my sister's now husband and they had a lawn business together and so my senior year in high school I got out of school early at noon I had only a four period day and I'd go to my sister's house for lunch well her boyfriend at the time was going to come over at lunchtime too during their lunch break um, from the lawn business and we would end up the four of us together all the time having lunch and you know slowly but surely we <laughs> thought each other were good looking and those kinds of things and um, that's how it started and uh, so that was back in 1992 we started dating and in 1994 we got married and started our family so that's how we met um, when I met my husband he was um, he had gone to Lutheran school when he was a kid and he knew about Jesus, but he really didn't have a relationship with God. And he was interested in coming to church with me because he wanted to see me and uh, wasn't really interested in church or God at the time. But about six months into that process, he began asking a lot of spiritual questions and then asked me how he could know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And so uh, one night I led him to the Lord in my car and he began his walk with God at that time. And, you know, it's crazy because I wasn't walking with the Lord at that time myself. And I would have my foot in the world and in church at the same time. And I knew that straddling that fence was wrong, but I didn't know how to stop. And um, I loved God. I loved church. I love his people. But I, I just loved worldly things, too. And um, I was very unhappy because no matter where I was, you know, if I was in the world, I was uncomfortable because I knew what God wanted from me. And then when I was with church friends and in, in church, I was uncomfortable because I knew I was living this other life. And so in order to lead my husband to the Lord, I knew then I had a responsibility. I couldn't keep doing both. And God really used that as a pivotal time in my own life to make my own decision. Here he was making a decision for Christ, and then I knew I needed to as well. And so that's when I really told God that I would live for him, and I would not just have him as the, the Savior, you know, to save me from my sins, Savior of my life, but to make him Lord mm -hmm. and to really follow him and do things his way. And so my journey started the same time as my husband's, even though I got saved as a little girl and baptized and grew up in church and things like that. And um, it, was a, it was a great way for God to bring it full circle for us. And um, we started our journey together at that time. That is really neat. I love your story. Well, where, so you guys are starting off, Tim was a brand new Christian. What is the time frame between that and receiving the call to begin this church? So when we got married in 1994, our church had a policy that if you're newly married, they didn't want you in ministry for the first year of your marriage. And I really appreciated that. And looking back on that, I really see the wisdom in it. And um, so we, we obeyed in that. And so a year after we were married, we began working in the student ministry and the students, um, that we started working with were freshmen. And so my husband took on a freshman guy's class and he was with them all the way through their senior year. By the time they were about to graduate, he was concerned for them as far as what would happen to them because most of the kids at that time in our church would just kind of fall away and quit coming to church really altogether. So he wanted something more for them and asked our youth pastor if he could start a college ministry. And they said yes to that. And when they did um, start that, we only had a handful of kids. Um, I want to say it was about it was about ten years later, eleven years later, um, when God actually moved us to Arizona. And so, in the process of doing ministry and being faithful in that, um, the call came in a different way. Uh, than I would have expected, I guess. But um, let's see, I went to a worship conference. So while my husband was leading this ministry for, for college age, um, I had moved over into doing the worship at that church. And um, when I was leading the worship, 
I went to a conference. And at this conference, I had several people um, say things to me and, and different things that happened that they were really prophesying, you're going to start a church in Arizona. Wow. And I thought, I, I don't know anything about that. You know, I, I, I didn't understand it. And the first person that she just came right up to me and just said it to my face, you're, God told me you're going to start a church in Arizona. And I was like, wow. I am. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what that meant. And then, um, and then several things happened at that conference. And the friend that was with me, she was from out of state and she looked at me and she's like, Christy, God is obviously saying you're going to go to Arizona and start a church. And I was immediately excited by this news, you know, and I ran home to tell my husband. And when I told him, he just laughed at me like, you are out of your mind. I have no idea what you're talking about. He was a full-time driver at UPS and had been with them for years. And we did ministry, you know, on the side, if you will. And we really enjoyed what we were doing. But um, there was no plans to start a church or be pastors. And so at that moment, I realized, and I don't know if this was the Holy Spirit or not. I, I want to say it was, but I realized I better keep my mouth shut about this and never say a word about it again, because I really didn't want it to be my influence that made my husband think about going and starting a church and moving our family out of state. We lived in California at the time, and that's where we grew up. And so I, our family was there. I, I wasn't going to be responsible for moving us away from everybody and, and all these things that I felt could, you know, come back to bite me, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah. And, um, I decided I better not mention this again, because if it was the Lord, then the Lord would do it. And I just began to pray. And my prayer was basically, God, if this is you, then I want it. And it's got to come from you. And so I know that you can do that. And I never mentioned it again. So the next year went by and the Lord began to tell me and Tim that we needed to sell our home. I have a little one coming in the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'll, yes, but I'll, I'll pause it so you can take care of that. So let's go back a little bit and just rewind because you guys are, so now you're both feeling called to sell your house. It sounds like both of you heard from God, but I want to go back to this period a, a year earlier when you distinctly felt God speaking to you about starting this church in Arizona. I mean, that's a really specific calling and he wasn't obviously on board with that. And I just really want to pause on that and the wisdom that it took for you to back off and to leave him room and leave him space. So, because I know that this is something, I think it's a woman thing. I don't know if it's a woman thing always to hear from God first, but we've talked about this, how a lot of times in your marriage, you felt like God has revealed something to you first, but you've waited because you've come to realize that he needs to hear it too. And I think that's so important in our prayer lives and in hearing from God that we think about that. Cause I know I've made the mistake also of saying, well, we need to do this. We need to do this and pushing. And it almost drives a wedge between that goal and my husband. And it's when we back off and let God be God. I think I just love that. And I think that demonstrates faith in God that you're not so excited about this idea yourself that you can say, I'm excited about this, but only if you're in it, God, and if you're in it, then you're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's really neat. So was it hard for you to resist? Were there times in that year that you wanted to say, but wait, God's confirming this for me in this way. Like, was that hard or did, was it easy? Yeah. Um, there were definitely times when I felt like see, see, see what God's doing, you know, but I also knew that, and maybe it was a little bit fear driven, you know, that I just could not imagine it happening. And then he wasn't sure about it. And then we were going to have further discord in our marriage yeah. over it. You know what right. I mean? Right. And, Absolutely. And I really didn't want that. And so I think Mostly it was because of that, mm -hmm. but I also was very apprehensive 
because this was kind of the first time I'd ever had anything happen to me like that, where people came up and just told me things. Right. And, and the different circumstances that were happening at this conference, I could go into that. But there was a few things that happened that were totally God. I mean, nobody could have known, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was really my first experience of something like that happening before. And I didn't really even know how to receive that. So I was even questioning, like, God, is this even you? Right. And, um, and I wanted to run home and tell him about it because it was exciting to have all these things happen one right after another over the course of a weekend. But then when I got home, it's like he deflated my bubble a little bit. And I was like, oh, what was that God? You know, and then I started questioning myself right. and questioning God. And then I just had to go in prayer and just say like, okay, God, you know, I just had to work it out with the Lord at that point. Like, okay, now I don't even know if that was you. I think it was, but I, you know, so it was all this, you know, fear a little bit and a, a little bit of uncertainty then at that point. And so shelving it wasn't, wasn't hard for me at that moment because I almost needed proof too. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of one of those things. I, I think about the verse where it says that M Mary pondered all these things in her heart. You know, it's kind of like that. Like, I felt like I was just pondering it in my heart and like, okay, I know what happened. I know what was said. I know it had to be God. Only God would know those things or do those things. And then it was a matter of just waiting. And, and there's been a few other things in my life where that has been the case. And so... Um, and I'm even currently waiting on some things in that way, you know? And so um, God's proven himself faithful enough to me at that point that I knew I could trust him to just wait on it. And so we waited and I waited. And, um, and I also now looking back, of course, it's so much different to look back on, on the time. Yeah. But I can see how God was really preparing us and working in my husband in order to get him to that place of seeing the same thing that I was told. And it is so cool now to look back on that and see it, you know, and at the time, um, in those moments of wanting to say, Oh, like, this is it, you know, this is, this matches. Can't you see? Right. Uh, and, and staying quiet just to watch God do his thing and watch him work. There's a joy that comes from that, you know, to be able to be like, okay, I see what's happening here. I can see what God's doing, you know? And I don't know, for me, those are those intimate moments with God that you can just look up to this guy and be like, I see, I see what you're doing here. The God we know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, but you know, I think that questioning is healthy too, because none of us has a 100% track record hearing from God. And, and it is so important with these decisions that, you know, to wonder, are these my thoughts? Because I mean, I've, I've been told, uh, there was one particular thing I remember that I was told by someone in college that did not come to pass and was very much not God's will. And if I had, and I, I believed it for a while, and I kind of was trying to push my agenda, which, because it was what I wanted to hear. Um, mm -hmm. And so for you to have that questioning of, is this from you? And you know, I, I know you're big enough to make this really clear. I just think it's, it's such a win-win yes. having that, you know, having that waiting and like, okay, I'm going to wait. I have this and I start, you know, for you to start to see things aligning and then to have that total confirmation from your husband that now he gets it and, and then it's just, God is all the more glorified in it. I just think it's a really neat picture of God allowing us to, to join in his plans in yeah. a way that's so, I don't know, just so God glorifying and so exciting for us too and faith building. Yeah. You know, and I, I want to fast forward a little bit yeah. and, and we can go back into the story at some point, but yeah. I, I have to say this because I, I believe God wants someone to hear this. And that is that if it wasn't for God calling us to this ministry and calling us to do this, we would have quit so many times, so right. many times. And it was that call that has anchored us to continue to move forward in this process. And without that call, we would have been left to always wonder, 
Like, was this God? Wasn't it God? You know, did we make the right decision? Should we have stayed? Should we have, you know, and, and to always be in that place, we know without a shadow of a doubt, it, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how bad it has gotten here, how, how bleak it's looking, you know, the circumstances. We know that we know that we know God called us to do this. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have been steadfast. And I, I, I believe that if God is calling you to something, he will reveal it. He will make it clear. There won't be doubt in any way. God's big enough to do that. And when he does that, you can stand so firm on that calling. I feel like, like I would die over it you know, because that's how sure I am that God called us to do this. And then he has proven it true over and over and over again with the things that are happening. And so had I pushed my agenda and, and called my husband instead of God calling him, mm -hmm. you know, that would have been a foundation that would have been shaky. But because it was God's doing, he has built a foundation on that call that has been so far, it has been immovable, and God willing, I believe that to be true for for our lifetime. So, wow. So, if you had pushed your own agenda, you would have totally undermined God's plans to to do it in His time, to unfold that plan in His time. Yeah, I, I like. Yeah. I love and that. I do believe God works all things together for good. You know, and He could use anything, and He could have sure. used my mistake, if you will, if I had pushed my husband. And I'm not saying there are times when I've pushed him into things. I'm sure I have. But um, for this particular time, I waited. And, and God has been faithful. And it solidifies for us where we are today and what we're doing to be exactly where God wants us to be. And there's so much joy in knowing that, so much peace. And we are so grateful for that call and that period of time when God really revealed himself. And so I'd like to share with you um, what happened when we went to sell our house, because this was the beginning of our prayer time and how prayer really played a part in this process. So when the two of us began to feel like we were supposed to sell this house, it was our first house that we bought. And we bought this house in 2002. At the time, we had three of our boys, and I was pregnant with our fourth one. And it was our first purchase. And so we were super excited about it. Of course, you pour your heart and soul into it. Everything that you buy for the home, you try to buy it the best that you can afford and things like that, because we were excited. We planned on living there for years and years and years and raising our family there. And so um, we had this cute little house. and. About a year and a half in to pouring our time and energy and money into this house, um, we had our fourth baby there. Um, God began to reveal to me, it seemed like every time I was in scripture, it was about selling your house and move away and leave everything and, you know, all these scriptures that talk about go, go, go. And I kind of began to question God, like, are you, what is this? Why does this keep coming up? Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of sat on it, you know, and one day my husband said to me, it seems like every time I turn around, God's telling me we're supposed to sell our house. Wow. <laughs> and he was afraid to say it to me. And I was afraid to say anything to him because we loved our home and we poured so much time and energy and money. And so I was like, are you kidding me? I'm getting the same thing. Wow. And so um, at, at that moment, we decided why don't we pray about this for two weeks? We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to discuss it with anybody. We're just going to talk to God about it. And then anything that he reveals to you, let's write it down. And then we'll come back together in two weeks. And so that's what we did. We began just going to the Lord and really begging God to show us, is this really what you want us to do? Because it was a big deal. And we didn't understand it. I mean, there was nowhere that we were going. Um, the market was great. It, we were gaining equity on our home. There was no need to sell it. And because the market was so great at the time, this was going to be in 2004, we decided, you know, we wouldn't be able to afford to buy another house 
because of it, the market, the housing prices were just too high in right. California. And so we just didn't understand why would God want us to sell our house and then go rent? I mean, it just didn't make sense to us. So we really needed to understand if this is what God wanted us to do because we weren't going to move forward until we were sure. After the two week time period, we came back together and we had several of the same verses that God had shown us. And we knew, we looked at each other and we said, we got to sell our house. And we loved our home and we weren't looking to sell it, but we knew that if we didn't, it would have been disobedience. Well, so and I want to interject, in I want to interject yeah. that I have actually used that after talking to you about that in Arizona. We, my husband, Matt and I have used that exact process twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. Twice, wow. at least. Uh, yeah, but definitely twice. It was when, when we were feeling like we were being called to move to Alaska. And then also um, when we were considering bring, uh, not homeschooling our oldest and putting him back in public school. Yes. Both times, God was just very faithful to to just reveal things. And, and the process was a little messy because there were a couple of iterations of coming together and, well, it didn't quite line up and we kind of flip-flopped positions and things like that. But in the end, when we repeated this process and kind of walked through it, it was just, it's been amazing. Um, the second time we actually involved our son because at the time he was 11. And we included him in that process of taking time and praying and mm -hmm. thinking and and then we all three came back together and talked about it. So it's been really neat to, for me, it's been a blessing for me to, to take that process and that idea of, you know, not making a pros and cons Beautiful. list, but taking that time and yeah. Yes. But yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. I, I'm excited. That this Absolutely. Is going out to other I want to say that we've, we've counseled people to do this as well. Yeah. And one of the things that I tell people is for married couples, you know, the Bible tells us that we are one that when he's joined us together, we've become one flesh. And so the Holy Spirit isn't going to say something to me, but then say something completely different to my husband. Right. So if we are getting conflicting answers in that time period, we know that means wait and we continue to pray on it some more. Yeah. Until we come together and, and the answers match yeah. because the Holy Spirit isn't going to lead us separately. He's going to lead us as one. And, and we really believe that. And so um, it's a great way to be able to test, if you will, you know, what it is, is this my will or is this what God's saying to do? Yeah. And, and it's been so far, we, we've used it and God's used it powerfully in our lives and in the lives of people around me. And so I just want to throw that out there in case somebody's like, oh, I'm going to use this formula, but then it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, like, wait a minute, we came back with different answers. What, what's that? Right. You know, so just take some more time on that. And that just means wait and, um, and really having some introspection on whether or not this is something that you're pushing or it's really what God is saying to you. So just throw that out there. Yeah. Um, so after we came back together and we did have the same answers, we knew it would be disobedience if we didn't move forward and we put our house on the market. And I just want to throw some numbers out there because this, again, it's God. And we bought that home for about $240,000. And exactly two years later, two years and one month, we sold it for $445,000, something like that. And wow. so just huge equity in this house. And because of that, we were able to put that money aside and we just didn't know what we were supposed to do with it. So we began to pray about that. You know, we rented a house for a year and we didn't know then what we were supposed to do. It was in that year that we rented that God revealed that we were going to start a church. Um, wow. <laughs> that process was a different one, but it was just as powerful in that it was God speaking through his word and through prayer. And... Um, we wanted to invest that money and not just let it sit in the bank. And so we decided uh, we had friends that were going to invest money in properties out in Arizona. And they asked us if we wanted to be a part of that. And so we came out to Arizona to look at the properties. 
And when we did that, um, we were not interested in doing that whatsoever. We actually didn't like the Tucson area when we got here. Oh, I hate saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true anymore, but at the time, we just didn't like it. And um, we, we just really weren't interested in having anything to do with that. Um, and then my brother-in-law and my sister came out and they found this little town of Sarita that was up and coming and had a master plan community. And when they came out here, my brother-in-law realized there were no churches in this, this particular area. And he came back to California and said, Tim, there's no churches there. You, you need to go out there and start a church. Wow. He's like, what are you talking about? You know? And part of that reason was because this ministry that he had started with the, with the college age kids grew from like six or eight kids to it's like over a hundred kids wow. at the time when we left. And so, you know, my brother and I think saw the potential in his ability to pastor people. But now and, your brother-in-law had never heard anything from you or anyone else about this idea and this what you had heard at this conference right i mean was or you know i honestly can't remember what was shared at that point or what wasn't um but i do know he, my brother-in-law was one of several people who told us why are you selling your home that is not a good idea what are you doing right. everyone that we talked to about it and tried to get counsel on told us not to do that right but we knew we had to, and we did it. And now, of course, looking back, we know why. But at the time, we were like, oh, you know, and everyone just told us it's a bad idea. What you're doing is not wise. And we just had to keep moving forward because we were positive the Lord told us to do it. And I, I want to say that I think it's those acts of obedience along the way that God kept giving us more and then right. more and then more. But we didn't always know we didn't know the end result. We didn't understand where we were going. All we knew is what he was saying right now. And so we obeyed that. And then he'd give us the next one. We're like, oh, and then we'd obey that. You know, and then it just kept progressing. It wasn't like we knew the whole picture, obviously, at the time. Um, so when my brother-in-law told my husband about starting a church here, we thought, no, nah, you know, of course, those are those moments where I was pondering like, oh, I can, okay, God, I see what you're doing, right? But um, my husband's like, no, that's, I, I'm not going to do that. So my brother-in-law said, well, we're going to invest in property out there and you guys should see this community. So we came back to see this community and we thought, hey, yeah, we could, all that money we have sitting in the bank, we should invest here. That will go a lot further than sitting in the bank. So we went ahead and set up to buy a home here so that we could rent it out. And we were here um, on a trip to sign the paperwork for that house, that rental. And when we did that, we, um, had, we were in the hotel room and my husband was reading his Bible. I'm blow drying my hair. And um, the Lord spoke to him right then and and gave him specific verses that said you are going to build a house here and he meant a house of the Lord not just a, a house but we did that too <laughs> so it was both and we had to call our realtor and say we're not going to buy this house and she was like oh but we said no we're going to buy another one we need to buy a house that will fit our family because this house wasn't big enough and so that was very exciting and we decided then um, that we knew God had and my husband came to me that day we went I remember we went to Denny's and in the Denny's parking lot, he said, babe, God told me this morning that we're going to move to Arizona and start a church. And, uh, and so from the time God told me until this time was just about a year, a year uh, process. Mm -hmm. And when he said that to me, all I could say, and this isn't the sweetest thing to say, but all I said to him was, I know. And that was it. You know, just, I knew. And I could see God. It wasn't, I told you so. Right. <laughs> Yes, that's true. Um, probably wanted to say that, but you know. right. um, so God had prepared my heart. And sometimes, you know, in talking about women knowing first, I think sometimes that's for me, at least it's been because he needs to prepare me a little bit longer, maybe yeah, than my husband. My husband is more funny. obedient. <laughs> like he's more like, you know what? God said it. Okay, let's do it. You know, and I'm like, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, so I think sometimes God has revealed things to me first, only because he needs to like 
you know, soften me up and, and get me to the place of obedience. I just take longer, I think, than my husband. And so, um, and I'm not saying that's for all women, but that's been for me. And um, at this point, I knew. And so when God told him, I was so ready. And I said, yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm ready. This is wow. awesome. So at that point, were you, were you totally excited? Were you terrified? Were you like at that point, just, you knew it so much that you just knew the details would work out. How did, how did you feel? Well, it's very mixed emotions because all the questions start flooding in, right? You're like, yes, God. (laughs) Yes. You know, it's like, yes, God, we'll obey you. We're so excited. Yes, we're going to do this. And then you go, how are we going to do this? We have no money. We have no, you know, and you just start, you know, we we're not ordained pastors, you know, And so we weren't sure then at that point what we were going to do. We honestly thought at that time that we were going to go back to our pastor and let him know, you know, what God had said to us. And we expected to go to seminary or some schooling of some sort for some time. And, you know, for my husband to get ordained and all of this. And so we kind of thought it was like, oh, yeah, Lord, we'll obey you. It'll be like in five years, you know. And we got out to um, California after that trip, and we immediately made an appointment with our pastor and let him know what God had said. And you know, our pastor at that time, told, he looked us right in the eye, and he just said, if God said to do it, there's no time to waste. You need to go now. And he said, I want you both out of ministry within six months, and I need you to replace yourselves with another leader and train them over that six-month period before you leave. We were like, what? (laughs) I wasn't thinking we were leaving in six months. I'm thinking years, right? And so it's easy to say yes to that. But when he was like, nope, let's do it now. We were like, well, what about schooling? He's like, you don't need schooling. And we'll ordain you. And, you know, and he just had all these answers. And then it became terrifying. But God led us through that process. And we both you know, had leaders that took our spots. I was the worship leader at that time. My husband was leading this college ministry and people took that over beautifully. And we got to, you know, see that transition happen in the six months. And then over the next, it was like three or four months, we sat in the congregation and did absolutely nothing, which God taught me a lot during that time too. And then in uh, November of 2005, we moved our family to Arizona And with a set of circumstances that surrounded that and God's hand in that, uh, we started our church in January of 2006. And our our real opening was Easter Sunday, 2006. Which I think is so poetic because this last Easter was a huge milestone for the Rock Church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was an amazing uh, journey to have our grand opening for our building. We just built our first building and the grand opening was Easter Sunday of this year, 13 years later. So what a joy it was to have that service and to be in our own place, a place to call home. And we're super excited about what God is doing there. So yeah. That is amazing. And I remember when we were part of the Rock Church that uh, we were there when the land was purchased to build the building. And I just remember this intense 40 days of fasting and prayer that the church did miraculous things that happened during that time. I mean, it's just the, the story of this church has been just filled with God's presence and his work, his hand, his favor. And so I, I was in tears watching the YouTube (laughs) video of that first Sunday on Easter Sunday when, um, when you guys got to meet in that church for the first time. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Well, I, I want to ask you just to close us out with, I know that there is someone or many someone's out there that are feeling a call from God. And I know you've given a lot of good advice about confirmation and giving God room to to speak. If someone is confident that God is calling them to do something, that it's something that they are um, feeling uh, alone in, if they feel like they're not surrounded by people, maybe they're surrounded by people doubting them. 
um, what advice would you give someone that's in that position that, that felt confident that God was calling them to something, but they're, they're surrounded by doubters and, and people that are, are advising them against what they feel called to? Yes. Well, that's, that's really hard because I think about so many Bible characters, you know, that that's where they were too. And, you know, let God's word encourage you. There's so much in there to give you that boost that you need to obey. But I would say ultimately just obey, obey. If he's calling you to something, you've just got to do it. You've got to do it. And then watch him surround you with people that will believe too. And it was so cool because when we moved out to Arizona, we didn't move out here alone. And I didn't expect that. I wasn't expecting people to come with us. I wasn't expecting people to catch the vision and want to help or, or partner with us. And we had several people. We had a team of at least 12 that came and moved, moved their home, their families, their jobs to come here and be a part of it. And that to me, it was unexpected. I, that's not something I expected. But if you would just obey and just do what God's telling you to do, he'll bring people around. He will bring support. He provides. He provides. And so there's no need to worry about the how. We often say, get the how out of here. <laughs> and um, it's true. You just have to not worry about how. You just have to worry about yes and doing. And so um, I just encourage you to get in his word, be encouraged by the you know, saints that have gone before us, and then just do it and watch God do amazing things in and through you. Well, I think that's, I like that. I love that. And, and I just really believe that this message is something that's going to encourage so many people. And um, I'm just, I'm excited to hear that. So we would love to hear from you who are listening. Just let us know, do, are you in a place where you feel like, like you're being called to something and, you know, are you, um, I'd also like to know about this whole idea of hearing God first, waiting on your husband. Is that a woman thing or are you, are you the, in your relationship where your husband hears first and you're the one that says yes and jumps on? I, I would love to hear that dynamic because that's really interesting to me. Yeah, I know with both, uh, both of us, we're kind of in the hearing, waiting and, and the husband coming on board. So, um, <laughs> well, how can we pray for you, Christy? I appreciate that so much. And um, there's a, a few areas I would love prayer in. Our church is growing. And because of that, there's growing pains, but they're all good. And there's many things that are happening where God has prepared us for this growth. And so we just want to do it well and with excellence and with love. And so just praying for our church as it grows. And our vision is to make disciples and just how we can really accomplish that and do it God's way. And then for our family, we have, um, you know, just, uh, we're so blessed with our kids and our lives and just what God has done. And with our family, we struggle with um, our littles, honestly, you know, this feeling of starting over. And uh, my husband and I just feel like we're old sometimes. And um, so just really the all of the patience and, and, you know, longevity that it's going to take to, to uh, raise these guys well and make disciples of them. And then um, for me personally, you know, I just see God is doing some really neat things in me as a leader and I want to lead well. So I would appreciate prayer on leading well and I, I just thank you so much. And thank you for letting me be a part of this today. I so enjoyed it. Oh, me too. Uh, we were talking about how we, we need to just meet like this to hang out and talk because this is right. awesome. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here. All right. Well, I will close us in prayer. Thank you. Father God, thank you so much for allowing us to hear your voice. God, for giving us the gift of communication with you. You could have yeah. set things into motion. You could have just allowed us to, to live and maybe know that you were there, but you speak to us, God. Thank you. We just thank mm -hmm. you yes. for um, this story 
of just painting a picture of what it looks like to hear from you, to be called into something greater than yourself, to be called into something that only you, God, could be a part of and could could make happen. And I just pray your blessing, God. Pour your blessing out on the Rock Church, on Christy and Tim as they lead, and all of the other leadership within the church. God, we just know that where you have brought more people in, you're, you're, you've already equipped them with everything that they need to lead these people. And I just pray that you would just rebuke the enemy, just send him, send him on his way if, at any time when he brings discouragement or doubt or despair, um, where he brings division. God, I just pray for unity for the body. I pray for um, Christy and Tim, first and foremost, to be unified in everything that they do, um, that there would be harmony within the body of Christ, God, that the Rock Church would be, uh, they're filled with many different people, many diverse people, God, but but they can produce such a harmony with their, with their diversity. I just, I pray against discord and just that you would unleash a harmony within the Rock Church. Mm. It would be beautiful that you would just continue to draw people in to this building that you've allowed to to be created and, um, and that you would just continue to grow them, um, in depth and in breadth. God, um, we lift up Christy and her family. We just pray for energy, for patience, for perseverance. And, and I just pray that they would see fruit in the time and the energy that they're expending in these little kids. Um, and just as they see them growing to know you and, and growing in, um, every way possible that they would see your hand at work and, and that you would be using them to transform and to refine Christy and Tim as well. And that they would see those changes um, and just be excited by them and, and just be able to, to walk forward with renewed purpose, just refreshment and, and just renewed vision and energy. Um, and we just pray that you would be glorified in the rock church, in Christy and Tim, in their family, in their children, as they go off on their own and, and begin their own adventures. God, just be glorified in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jamie.